Hey everyone, Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com. And uh, important topic to cover today that's um, I think going to be uh, of interest to people um, is a paper uh, that came out looking at an association uh, between creatine uh, and cancer, uh, which I think uh, is sort of making the rounds. You know how people are. Uh, anything comes out, especially if they, you know, certain terms obviously like cancer or heart disease or some just get people's attention um, without a lot of you know critical thought put towards it and stuff so I'm gonna discuss this this paper uh, that came out and uh, hopefully it will be uh, of value to people uh, hopefully you all know that you know I've been researching and writing about creatine and for 30 years uh, I was the first to uh, <clears throat> write about the the non-gym uses of creatine you know in the major magazines as far as you know brain health and heart health and all that and hopefully you're aware of those benefits but that's another video for another day so before we talk about this paper uh, in any depth we, we have to uh, we got to cover a few couple of key concepts because there's just no way to really without keeping those in mind you know sort of in the background of your of your head there's really no way to to approach a topic like especially if it's a complicated topic if it's a nuanced topic which this is cancer is always nuanced you know there's very um, you know there might be of course some non nuanced uh, issues with with cancer like smoking causes lung cancer okay there's nothing nuanced about that I mean you could you could get into nuances about it and say well you know how many cigarettes for how long and so on and so on but there are there are most of the topics of cancer, unfortunately, because cancer is such a complicated topic. There's obviously uh, a lot of knowns and a lot of unknowns of cancer and so forth. So a couple of concepts that uh, we have to talk about. One is something that I have stressed forever, and, and I'm just going to stress it again to lead into it, which is there is no free lunch in human biology. Nothing. There is, there is nothing that we do, nothing that we eat no choices we make and so forth. There is no perfect food, there is no perfect supplement, there is no perfect drug, there is no perfect choice uh, as far as I'd say an exercise or whatever. There is no free lunch in human biology. Uh, for example, I, I did a video, you know, I don't know, a few months back on N-acetylcysteine uh, and in a possible association between cancer um, now, I take N-acetylcysteine, uh, you know, hopefully you all know what that is, and I have videos here on N-acetylcysteine versus whey, but there, there have been some modestly compelling papers about a possible association of N-acetylcysteine and a couple of sp specific forms of cancer, and it is possible that there are people, certain subgroup, small group of people, that may not want to take N-acetylcysteine. Uh, most people increasing your uh, glutathione levels because that's that's the basic benefit of N-acetylcysteine is a benefit. It's a net benefit to the vast majority of people uh, to uh, keep their glutathione levels up, whether that's through N-acetylcysteine, whether that's through whey. Whey may be superior, but again, that's another video. And when I did that video, you know, some people uh, commented below the video about, you know, Will, don't, you know, uh, you're just looking for problems, um, you know, don't have to focus on any possible little negatives, something, something, something. Um, and there you have it. The point being that there's just, there is no, there is no perfect supplement. There's no perfect anything for anybody. And I, I think people just really have a hard time with that. You know, anytime they, they hear about a positive, a possible negative, and remember possible is the key word here, uh, it's not even close to well-established uh, in human in humans that knack is is a problem or counter uh, uh, contraindicated for certain cancers I'll post that video below this one uh, nor is there any human good human data what we're going to talk about as far as creatine and cancer but as soon as people hear something like that you know they just again their brain sometimes switches off because they just can't understand that again there is no free lunch in human biology so this segues into another concept, which are related, but um, which is risk-benefit. You know, again, 
especially with emotionally laden topics um, like cancer, uh, COVID, which is obviously a very hot topic. Um, certain, there are certain topics that are very emotionally laden for people uh, and risk benefit. And these are even including people that should know better, that have the scientific medical background to, to, to should know better don't do a very good job with risk benefit analysis this is not very this is not very well stressed honestly i think it's not stressed really anywhere near enough as it should be even among medical and scientific uh, educations and such um but i mean I, I, you know you you're again there's no free lunch you're making risk benefit assessments every day of your life sometimes people again aren't being logical they're not applying critical thinking to their to their risk benefits assessment, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a perfect example, just like a really it's a silly example, but it's a, it's a it's the example that actually stuck with me my my whole life. Um, my mother, uh, this was like she's uh, this is something that stuck with me. Like I said, I learned about like illogical uh, emotional. Uh, uh, responses to things versus like thinking them through with making a sort of a a, a logical evidence-based risk benefit. So my mother, when she was growing up in Maine, um, there was a very uh, the area she was in had a lot of mountainous roads and steep inclines, and her boyfriend, uh, you know, her teenage boyfriend, he uh, on a, a, a windy road up in a mountain, he went off the cliff in his car. And he was not wearing a seatbelt, and he got thrown out of the car. And the car went down the cliff and, you know, rolled, it totally ruined, it destroyed the car. He actually was okay. He had some lumps and bumps and stuff, but he actually was okay. And my mother, from that day on, would never wear a seatbelt. As far as she was concerned, that the, the risk of, of going over a hill, even if she was in a flat, no matter where she was, but she would not wear a seatbelt because of that example in life where she decided that that was clearly proof that seatbelts were a net, you know, were more risky than not wearing a seatbelt. Now, obviously this isn't true. And even at the age, you know, I pointed this out to her, I, you know, was, you know, uh, uh, um, I was 10 years old or 12 years old, whatever I was, I was like, ma, th that makes no sense. You know that, we know that seatbelts are absolutely save lives. We, know, you know, you have this N equals one uh, I didn't say that at 12, but anyway, I said you have this like one example in your life that you think proves that seatbelts are, are, you know, more dangerous than they're worth, but no, she would not change her mind on this. And, you know, you see that type of thing all the time. And if, if this is very dysfunctional for people in their general lives, making educated guesses, making evidence-based, you know, um, choices about things that they do. So you really have to keep these things in mind. And I, I do stress it in many videos, and I'm going to continue to stress it in my articles and my videos, uh, because this really helps for us to make this, you know smart decisions that there is no free lunch in human biology, and you have got to make educated as best as you can. Sometimes, again, sometimes these, these risk benefits are, are, you may have, you know, one thing based on very good, solid data you may have the other thing based on very hypothetical conjecture and so forth. So again, you have to weigh not just the risk benefit, but what is the what is the strength of the evidence on your risk benefit? And you have to be very careful uh, not to just go after the thing that appeals to what we call confirmation bias, which is you, we all want and we all do it. I do it. Everybody does it. Nobody is above going towards the thing that confirms their own bias. We all do it. Again, it takes, it takes some practice. It takes some consciousness to, to, to be aware when you're doing it. But we're all susceptible to it. So don't, don't let anybody think that, you know, uh, let anybody have you think they're above it because they're not. I will say some people are obviously more in tune to knowing they're doing it and ha being aware you're doing this is half the battle. So with all that said, let's get into the discussion of this, this paper. Another thing we have to talk about is, is stages of, uh, there's three key aspects of cancer that we have to talk about before we, we move to the next part. So there's like three key aspects. First key aspect of cancer, of course, is causation of cancer. That is something, whatever it may be, whether it's a chemical or a hormone or, or whatever, that 
converts that is carcinogenic that converts a healthy cell into cancer that's you know the first stage of cancer right stage 2 of of any cancer is the growth of the cancer that is you know does the does this cancer cell or cancer cells multiply uh, into a into a tumor into a larger growth but it's staying there it's just the one original cancer that's phase 2 phase 3 is what we would call metastases which is spreading from a cancer cells or whatever spreading from the original location and that's what we're going to talk about with this paper so a as to creatine we know that creatine is not carcinogenic that's very clear the studies either find no effect or or a, a an actual anti a mild anti-cancer benefit uh, and these are you know long term uh, we don't see any increase in cancer rates uh, in, in humans and we've got decades of studies, and we've got animal studies. So that one's not an issue. Creatine is not carcinogenic. Two, cre uh, um, can t tumor growth. The, that's phase two, which is the original tumor itself, not spread. Just what is what does creatine do? Excuse me. <coughs> what does creatine potentially do to growing a tumor? And we also have very good data that creatine is actually reduces the growth of, of tumors. Uh, we have, again, we have animal studies. Uh, actually, uh, I did a blog post about that on one really interesting study that, that found that um, creatine uh, improved uh, the immune function, um, CD8 cells against cancer. I'll post that below the video. So on the second issue of cancer, growing the tumor from the original, let's say, cancer cells to something larger, again, we have very good data that um, not only does creatine not grow tumors, it actually reduces the growth of tumors. And that's actually mentioned in this paper too. I'm not giving this paper, saying it's a bad paper yet. We'll get to it. So the third part, tumor spread or metastases, is where this paper discusses some, some studies, some animal studies that suggest that creatine did promote the metastases of certain cancers, certain cell types. And I don't think that something should be ignored uh, or dismissed. Again, this is where I'm being aware of my my own confirmation bias because, uh, you know, of course I like creatine. I take creatine. Uh, there's no doubt at all in my mind that the data is overwhelmingly risk-benefit in favor of creatine. The net benefit of creatine is overwhelming. And so it would be my... It would be my my bias to to dismiss this study and say, oh, it doesn't matter, you know. And this is what a lot of people would do. And this is people that, again, with scientific medical backgrounds who should know better will often just dismiss out of hand things they don't like the answer to. So there, the this paper, which I will uh, discuss a little bit. Let's let's go over to it. Let me uh, let me get it into the screen here. Okay. So this paper, which uh, it's a good, this is not a bad paper. They're not, you know, the paper doesn't just slam creatine. It does talk about that there has been studies, again, just as we were talking about the creatine um, is not carcinogenic, that it actually, in animal models, uh, actually finds that it's a benefit to actually um, reducing the growth of cancer, cancer uh, tumors and stuff. But uh, in these very specific animal models did find that it increased uh, metastases of existing cancer, specific cancers. One of the problems here is, A, cancer, as I mentioned, is a very complicated disease. Um, most of the time when you see people making big generalizations about cancers, any cancers, they're wrong. Because in one environment, one cancer will grow from it. In, an, in the same environment, it will suppress a different cancer. Um, and so I, I, every time I see you know, real general comments about cancers. I, I, I know they're already don't probably don't know as much about cancer uh, as they think. So cancer, you know, cancer obviously hijacks uh, energy pathways and blood flow. Uh, and it's, you know, obviously it's very uh, tricky in that way. So this paper does discuss um, some studies that found, like I say, the, the, uh, some increased rates of metastases in some very specific cancers, uh, some breast cancers. Uh, I think colorectal cancer. Uh, you do have to understand that these these studies are done with, in in very um, specific animal models. They're talking about animals that are often bred to be very susceptible to cancer. 
Sometimes they are bred to be susceptible to even specific cancers. Uh, you load them up with, uh, you know, very high doses or injectable uh, creatine and so forth. So these are, these are not necessarily applicable to humans. It's really difficult to make the leap to humans with uh, some of these studies. But having said that, just like I said about NAC, you know, I think if you were diagnosed with those specific cancers, you might want to err uh, on the side of caution and not uh, use creatine. I, I don't have any problems uh, making those suggestions. Um, I, again, I think it's what's beyond clear at this point as far as the, the net benefit of uh, creatine supplementation for your entire body, which um, I, I won't go down the, the whole list, but I would hope the people watching this by now know of the variety of benefits of, of creatine. But I don't have any, uh, this, this would be, this, a paper like this with, with this discussion is about as far into hypothetical and conjecture as you're going to get as far as, as far as whether, you know, there's any real worry uh, of human beings that have those specific cancers. But again, just like I said with NAC, uh, I think until there is more human data, um, definitive human data, um, if somebody is diagnosed with those specific cancers, then maybe not you. Maybe uh, avoiding creatine might be uh, might be the smart move. Um, I, I don't I don't know if I personally would. Um, I have to, to be honest with you. I again I I'd probably weigh the the, the risk benefit and and feel that the benefit to me as an individual outweighed the, the risk in that situation. But you know uh, you don't know until you're in that situation, and therefore I don't think anybody should uh, say what they would do in certain situations uh, until they're in it. Uh, so that's, that's my take there. So if this paper gets passed around and you see it uh, or you hear people just, you know, randomly pop up and uh, make claims about uh, creatine, you know, oh, I just saw a paper I heard from, as usual, it's usually like, it's usually, you know, one person who tells another person on the internet who tells another person on the internet who shares a meme uh, or something about a thing without ever reading the paper and so forth that, you know, creatine causes cancer or coffee causes baldness or, oh, well, I probably shouldn't have said that because I drink a lot of coffee. Um, you know, or, uh, the, you know, the blue, blue cars uh, cause more accidents, whatever, uh, are not, again, they're, they're uh, more about clicks and ratings than they are about reality. And uh, I would say to anybody, certainly from this paper and this evidence that would suggest that uh, uh, creatine is, uh, certainly causes cancer. We know that's not true. And we also know that creatine, like I say, uh, does actually reduce the growth of tumors. Uh, and the third part, like I say, which is metastases, uh, in these very uh, specific animal studies uh, did show something that I think uh, is worth talking about and um, keeping an eye on. It's one of those things where I'm going to say, yeah, it's interesting. I'm not going to dismiss it or ignore it. Uh, but I, I would require a considerably more evidence before I was to get, you know, uh, really wound up about it and say, you know, if you have those specific cancers, absolutely avoid it, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so that's, that's my take on that. If you've got questions, comments, uh, leave them below. Obviously, like this video and uh, follow uh, this YouTube ch channel for obvious reasons. And I'll see you all uh, on the brink.